time I leave my car, even if I'm just going down the street for five minutes, it's always a less than probably, I would say, like 10% chance of getting a parking spot when I come back. And I have to walk, I think it's like a 40 minute walk for like my longest class. Yeah. Okay, I pay a lot of money to go here, so I shouldn't have to pay for parking. And if I do pay for parking, then I should actually have somewhere to park. Everyone has their own opinion on parking. I don't have any problems with USC parking. None. The $800 is just great. <laughs> In fall 2015 to fall 2016, USC had an over 30% increase in revenue from parking and a 150% increase from fall 2012 and generates $1 million in annual revenue off just this. In addition to this, two new apartment buildings were built in parking lots and only have enough parking to accommodate their residents, if at all. In addition to new buildings like the Darlamore School of Business near Main Street, USC has become very quickly congested. So a solution to all this seems obvious, make more parking spaces. But as USC's campus continues to grow, we face an issue. We just run out of space. For students, the options are limited to general parking, metered parking, garage parking, which can cost up to $400 a semester, or the coveted free parking. It's a lot. Parking is a lot. Even looking for like off-campus housing next year, like the parking is so much cheaper than now. So it's kind of like, why? And you're already paying tuition and everything else. Like, why do I need to pay $400 a semester to park my car? I don't like that they charge you to like get the pass to park places. And then when you can't find a spot, you need to go park at a meter. Behind my own residence hall, because I pay for it. I go to school here. <laughs> I, um, it should definitely be less, I feel like, because we pay to go here in the first place. And paying $800 a year like that isn't a parking spot, it's a lottery ticket. And for students who are constantly on the move throughout the day, there's another form of payment. And then yeah, my friend has tickets. like $200 in parking tickets right now. So on top of student loans with things like tuition, textbooks, and cost of living, it's easy to see why parking lots can very quickly turn into the Old West. For faculty and staff, many of them can't park where they actually work, and also face the same issues with limited parking. They also have permit fees, which can grow up to nearly $250 a semester. A former professor had to walk over a mile and a half from his faculty parking lot to his office. He also told us that the already limited faculty parking is getting closed down over time, forcing faculty and staff members to buy into USC's parking passes for the garages. He also said that faculty parking would be closed down without warning forcing him into paying the meter fees. However, the hour-long cap on the meters would also make him unavailable to teach hour-long classes. He also cited multiple rules, such as being fined for pulling through, which he said, proves that USC is in the business of making money, not giving education. And a staff member had to continually run out to pay the meter during her shift. But the third group, businesses, can face an even harsher reality than just tickets and fees. We sat down with Ted Contos to see how his business was affected by parking. Yes, good evening. My name is uh, Ted Contos. Uh, my wife and I are the former owners of um, Uncle Mario's Pizza Joint, which was located at um, the Odessa 
building on the corner of Main and Blossom. Uh, our business was open for five years and um, it is without a doubt one of the biggest contributing factors was the fact that there was um, no parking available. There was um, extremely limited parking, only two uh, paid parking spots in front of the store that was supposedly accommodating three and at times four retail operations and that was an impossibility. People uh, would have had to park blocks away. Your employees? Employees included and we were very hampered when it came to employees because we had a hard time finding employees because they would realize early on that if they drove a car that it was almost impossible for them to find a parking spot to come to work or they would have to go pay to one of the pay parking um, areas which was far away from the location and made it very difficult for them to pay um, you know in bigger cities it's even worse than Columbia but certainly when it comes to primarily minimum wage employees, I think it's awfully difficult to expect them to pay for parking for the reward of earning minimum wage or just slightly above that. Um, all of us in that area, at Main Street and Blossom in the Odessa area, and even a few, few blocks farther up going towards the state capital, um, most of our people, though, or the, the, the people running businesses, mm -hmm. were very, very disheartened by the lack of parking um, available to not only to their employees, but also to the customers, which obviously can help a business grow and keep it going. And uh, that was very problematic for us. Unfortunately, on many, many occasions, um, I would hear friends of mine, cohorts, um, People that I've known in Columbia for many years would tell me that, well, last week, Ted, we tried to come by your place, but we drove around four or five times around the block and could not find any parking, so we finally gave up. And as a business owner, that really breaks your heart, knowing that these are people and friends, acquaintances, other people that uh, we had met uh, once we opened up. They were trying to support our business, but could not, and finally had to give up after a while. Uh, so, uh, yes, we had a number of those instances, and like I said, it was a big, big factor in, uh, you know, in the eventual closing of the business was the lack of parking. There needs to be a focus on parking. It may seem like just a minor inconvenience for many of us, but we have to remember it determines everywhere we go, and in many people's cases, their livelihood. New buildings on campus, like the Student Health Center, and the new business school are great, but they're placed in high traffic areas and it only shows how badly USC needs to acknowledge their overcrowded parking problems and incorporate solutions like garages into their new developments to keep an eye on it. And it's up to the people like us who need those parking spaces to make sure they do it. And I don't think anything sums up our feelings better than how Ted finished his interview. The parking situation, of course, that this is what it's all about, is a big problem and it has to be addressed at some point in time in, in a very comprehensive way for students, faculty, staff, uh, state employees, just a couple of blocks up the road, and of course the business proprietors that have businesses that can hopefully survive and, and thrive.